I maxed out my library card. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. Hi. My name is Madison, and if you don't know this about me, I work at a library. And for the first time in my entire life, I maxed out my library card. Yes. I have checked out 25 books from the library. Um, and today I'm going to talk about all of them with you guys because I think this is a fun video concept because I don't buy books anymore since I work at a library. I just bring all, I just bring them all home. So it's going to be kind of like a library haul. And I checked all of these out, but I'm not going to read them all. So let's just have fun and talk about them while I have them. You know, let's enjoy this part of books, not the part that you're supposed to enjoy. No order to this. No rhyme or reason, we're just going to chat, and we're actually going to start off with the audiobook I have on Libby, which is Empire of the Vampire. I have the physical book right here. I am reading this for a video, and I'm not going to the, not finish the audiobook within this time period, but it is one of the items that I have on my card. It is my only Libby book, however, but it's one of the books that I have to check out right now. Okay, now let's talk about the fun bits. First in the stack, we have The Bill of Obligations by Richard Haas. This is one of the library's new nonfiction books. I checked it out because it sounded interesting. It says ten, uh, The Ten Habits of Good Citizens. I love America. I wanted to just see what it said. And I am three pages into it. I read the preface a couple days ago. And I've already renewed this once, so if I'm going to read it, I need to read it now. And as we go through, I'll put them in the back of the thing. So, yeah. Next, next in the stack is How to Date a Superhero and Not Die Trying by Christina Fernandez. I am 48 pages into this book, and I really like this book so far. It is about this girl who is named... Astrid, which I hate the name Astrid, like I just think How to Train Your Dragon, and I don't like Astrid and How to Train Your Dragon. So I'm really conflicted about the character, but I like the story so far. Um, it's basically Astrid. She ends up almost getting killed one night and uh, finds out that her boyfriend is a superhero, so she has to start going to this training program to for people who date uh, superheroes, and I really like it so far. But I just, listen guys, when it comes to reading or playing Sims, I pick Sims. Or pa pa last weekend, instead of reading, I played Hogwarts Legacy and worked. So, yes. I do obviously need to read because I have a problem, but this is what I, I know I said I need to read this one first, but I actually need to read this one first because Erica, one of my co-workers, is on hold for it, and I've already renewed it, um, and so the due date is coming up very, very soon. Then in the stack, we have a Michael Knowles book. I don't care if you unsubscribe for me because of this, but it is Controlling Words, Controlling Minds by Michael Knowles, or it's called Speechless, but that's the, that's like the col speechless colon. That's the title. Um, this is by Michael Knowles. I saw it in the library because when I shelved in our political section, I can't not take at least one book. It's just too interesting. And when I saw Michael Knowles, I was like, hey, I watched your uh, YouTube channel. So I wanted to check it out, see what it was about. I'm uh, on chapter two, eight pages into it. And it's kind of hard to follow because of the way it's written, but I'm going to give it a little bit more try and just see if I can get into it a little bit more. It talks about the English language, the way words are changed to mean different things than what they actually mean. Uh, the, it seems like it would have an interesting premise, and the premise itself is interesting. I just don't know if I like the way it is written, but I'm only eight pages into it, so I want to give it, I want to give it at least two more chapters, you know, 30, 50 pages into it before I DNF it and bring it to the library or I just run out of time and have to return it anyway. And then we have Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is a book that I'm reading with my granny. We are on page 165 or that's where I am and this is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide for Murder which I read with her and loved. Gave it five stars. This one is not 
as interesting. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is like this murder mystery that this girl is trying to solve for her school project. We've all heard about it. We all know what it is. Probably a lot of you watched this video have indeed read the book. But this is the sequel and I'm just not as intrigued in it. I know I saw on Kalia D, which I don't know if I pronounced her first name correctly, but somebody in her comment section said that she should read the whole series because it has a very big plot twist that you don't see coming at the end. And I want to know what the plot twist is. So that is why I am like so dead set on reading the rest of the series. And my granny actually has read today's pages, which is up to... 257 and she says that she really wants to continue in it i just didn't read mine today so we we gotta take a we gotta we, we can't read any more pages until i can i catch up but maybe it'll finally get good over uh two-thirds of the way in so that's that one and then I saw Ron DeSantis talk about this one. It is The Managerial Revolution by somebody named Burham. Who's the author? Uh, just give me Bur Burham. I don't know who the author of this one is, but I wanted to check this out because I am a finance student, and this is a book that deals with finance and economy um, of America. Obviously, this is an older book, but I still want to read it to gain a little bit of like background knowledge. And I mean, a governor of the United States of America quoted this book. So I really want to read it, see what it's about. I like the way it starts. Um, it starts with, during the course of the Second World War, which began on September 1st, 1939, growing numbers of persons came to the conclusion that this war could not be adequately understood in the usual military and diplomatic terms. And I don't know, I just like the way that it starts off. It grabs me, and I want to continue reading, but as we can see, I have a lot of books checked out. So, to do so, I'm going to have to actually read, and I have a problem reading. So, there's that one. And then I have Harry Potter Hogwarts Handbook and Harry Potter Character Compendium because, hello, I'm a major Hogwarts fan. I love Hogwarts. Uh, I love Harry Potter. I love J.K. Rowling. Sorry, I just knocked my water off. I love Harry Potter. I love J.K. Rowling. I like Hogwarts Legacy. I'm further into it now, and I'm having a lot more fun with it. I'm, like, addicted. I'm officially addicted to Hogwarts Legacy, so I'm having fun with Hogwarts Legacy. I love the Marauders fandom. James Potter is the love of my life. Like, I love him so much, so I wanted to check these out for my library. These I don't really plan on reading. I just want to, like, look through them and see if there's anything interesting. Now that I have played Hogwarts Legacy. I don't know if the Hogwarts Handbook would be of um, some, like something that I need, but I used to write Harry Potter fan fiction, and I have a few ideas in my head swirling around that I would like to just write and finally get out of my head. So that is one reason why I checked both of these out, so that I could read through them and see if there was anything I really needed, just in case I do write this fan fiction. Um, I actually can like I can return to these, but I don't really know a lot of these characters, so it's probably not going to be too too necessary. I'll just go to the Harry Potter wiki and it'll give me like the same information. Next in the stack, we have a book for school, which is The Truth About Crypto by Rick Elderman. This is a book that I'm reading for school. I am currently 40 pages into it. I'm on part two, Understanding Bitcoin and Other Digital Assets. I picked this book because I knew we had it at the library. I have shelved it before, and I am writing my uh, paper for school this term on cryptocurrency, or as Rick says I should call it, digital currency. So I wanted to read this and just kind of get and grasp a better idea of what cryptocurrency, digital currency is. Um, I'm gonna get sources, other sources, of course, but this is one that I wanted to read. And in fact, uh, A Material Revolution was mentioned in tandem by, uh, Ron DeSantis when he was talking about digital money. I do believe so. So I thought I could also use that book 
when I write this paper. So that is one reason why I have this. It is the only reason why I have it. And I'm 40 pages into it and I like the way it's written. I have taken some sticky notes. This is a library book so I can't write in it. But I have some tabs in it and um, I think it's going to be a good resource for my paper. Okay, I think we're halfway because next up on the list we have the three books that pushed me to hit my limit of 25 books per card. We have the 86 manga series. These are new books. They just got checked in today. I am on hold for the first one. And then I just checked out books two and three because Erica doesn't, who, Erica, who is a teen, um, the teen librarian doesn't like putting books two and three on the shelf if we don't have one. So I just checked out all three of them. This reminds me of The Hunger Games, so I wanted to read it and see how accurate it was. This could be a total flop, but I wanted to give it a try. This is, Just giving the books a try is how I found Kaiju number eight, which I love. So if I can do that again, then I'm not going to be upset about it. I don't have a lot to say, but I checked these out. So onto the shelf they go. Next up we have Anarchy State and Utopia by Robert Nozick. This is not a very fun book to hold up because there's no cover to it but what is fun about it is that we borrowed this from Colorado State University if you can see that right there and I go to Colorado State University Global so I thought that was fun. This is the book that created the idea of libertarianism and as a finance major I thought it would be very smart of me to get a book that read, that is talking about the beginning, the nature of libertarianism. So I got this one and then I also checked out um, A Theory of Justice by John Rawls which he, this is the first book that uh, created the idea of liberalism and both of those theories. So I wanted to check out both of them in tandem, read both of them to kind of get a better understanding of that economic theory so that if I ever need to debate economics, I have read the original sources. That is why I have both of these. And then I have Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun by El Casaman Casamano. I almost said Casamino, but Casamano. I am waiting for my granny to get her hands on this because we are both super excited to read this. Um, this is the third book in the Finley Donovan series. My granny and I both really enjoyed the first one. Erica at work has read this series. I like the first one better. She likes the second one better. Somebody who works at City Hall across from us in the records department has also read this series and she and I, like, we talk about it. And then somebody else is taking my recommendation, recommendation and loved it. So we kind of have, like, a whole little Finley Donovan stan series at the library. And they have all gotten to read this. Erica checked it out, but she didn't read it. Uh, the, uh, the other two people, however, have read it and I want to read it so that I can talk with them about it. And also, my granny and I just really want to read this one. Um, I'm very interested in it. It sounds kind kind of like a silly stupid premise but the first one is a silly stupid premise it's a silly stupid series that a lot of people adore and I am one of those and then we have another uh, impulse pick which is my status as an assassin obviously exceeds the heroes this is the first book in this manga series which I think I, my library has the first three of and I love assassins, so I've seen this a couple of times. I truly have. But I like assassins, and finally, this weekend, I just decided, screw it, let's check it out, and let's read it. Let's see what it's about. I haven't yet. It's only been three days since I checked it out. But <laughs> um, I want to read it, so I got this. I have a couple of manga on here. Um, I do enjoy reading comic books, manga, the uh, manhwa. I love soul leveling. So I'm excited to read this one. I'm looking for another good series to binge recommend to all of the manga lovers in my library and get them to read. So I got this one. And then I have The Hellbound as well. 
this is one that I actually originally checked out when it first got put onto the shelves, but I renewed it, ran out of time for it, so I brought it back to the library because Erica was on hold for it. Then she did not read it because somebody who read uh, Kaiju number eight was looking for something and I didn't have any suggestions, but I said that this is one that I'm interested in, so she didn't read it because I gave it to him, and then I don't think she ever uh, finished it. But I want to give it a try. We have the first two at work. I don't know if it's going to be good. It's a little bit, it's a heftier one compared to all of the other ones that I have brought home and have on my ridiculously full shelf. But I want to give it a try. I want to give it a try this time. I don't just want to check it out for three weeks and then bring it back with shame because I didn't read it. So that's why this one's here. Now we have just a few more books here. And, um, the next one is one that I have deep shame in because I have had this in my possession since I finished Vita Nostra last year. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's bad. So the book I'm talking about is The Scar by Marina and Sergio Diacinico. I've had this one in my possession for so long because I love Vita Nostra. And as soon as I finished Vita Nostra... Actually, before I even finished it, I checked this book out because I wanted to read more of their works. That has obviously not happened, and it's now a part of my uh, TBR of shame, so it'll be in a video eventually. And yeah, I would just I need to I need to sit down and either read this or return it to the library because I've had it for almost a year at this point in my possession. I keep checking it in and checking it back out, renewing it, renewing it, checking it back out to me, renewing it, checking it in, checking it out. Like, I keep doing it. I keep playing the same dance routine with this book, and I never read it. So I need to finally make my decision on this, and I will, because it's going to be in, my, in a video. I just have to get to that video, okay? It will be read eventually. And then these three books are actually books that I checked out in preparation for my granny and I's like two little person book club. I have The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. This is one that I just wanted to check out because it's a mystery. My granny and I like mystery books and it's also like a middle grade so it fits for both of us. And it's a Disney Plus original series. Disney and I have a troubling relationship right now but... If we like the book, then we have a series to read, and my granny and I, are we like to read series so that we know what we're going to read. And then I have Vampires by Justin Somper. This is a book that Shania, my coworker, really loves. She's actually the one who bought the replacement for it because we would not buy a replacement for the book for some reason, so she was just like, fine. I'll buy the replacement and donate it to the library so that we can get it back on the shelves so that other people can read it. It's a five book series. It sounds interesting. It's basically vampires meet pirates, hence the vampires title. So she likes it. I want to read it and love it. And um, yeah, it doesn't actually like fit on the book. I don't know if y'all can see that. It doesn't fit. So that's annoying. But look. My shelf has never been this full because I've never hit my my limit, my credit card limit. No, I've never hit my library card limit. And then we have the Outlaws Scarlet and Brown, Brown, Brown. Okay, it looked like a G. So then we have the Outlaws Scarlet and Brown, which is by Jonathan Stroud. And uh, oh, look, Rick Riordan blurbed it. So this is like another middle grade. I have shelved by it before. I think I shelved it out of the new shelf onto our shelf before and I wanted to read it then. I see it all the time and I want to read it so I just grabbed it and brought it home for my granny and I to read so that we finally just do it. Just do it. I wonder if he knew that was going to become a meme. Three more books, okay? Let's go everybody. Let's do this one. Socialism Sucks by Robert Lawson and Benjamin Powell. Listen, I am a finance student. I agree with the title of this book. It is short. I was like, let's just bring it home. Let's see what it's about. There's beer glasses on it. It sounds like a semi 
It sounds semi like a rhetorical silly book that has seriousness based behind it and I just want to give it a try. It sounds fun. It also sounds like it would be a really good book to read because it talks about the history of countries that have had socialism behind them for their economic uh, status, stuff like that. So the thing says two economists drink their way through the unfree world. So it sounds fun and that's why I checked it out. Again, it was in the political section. I have to take something home every time I shelf there. Then we have Sit Up Straight by Vin Pom. Vin Pom. I don't think I need an explanation to why I got this book. I sit all the time. Everything I do involves sitting, including reading, whenever I do do it. And I opened it and I saw like one tip and I was like, yes, I will check this out. So I'm not going to sit through and read everything about it but I am going to look at the tips and stuff like that. So this isn't what I'm gonna read, but I am gonna look through it. Okay, and then the last book we have is Political Junkies by Claire Bond Potter. Potter, <laughs> um, And this is from talk radio to Twitter, how alternative media hooked us on politics and broke our democracy. It's also in the political section. I don't have anything else to say. Yeah. This is my addiction. This is my, uh, this is my shelf that I keep my library books on and the books that I am currently in the middle of reading. So that's why it's the library bookshelf. <sighs> yeah. I know it looks bad, you guys, because it is bad. It has gotten really bad. But... This is my card limit, so even though I work at the library, and technically we can bend the rules a little bit, and I can check out more than just 25, I will not do that. I will not do that because of this. I'm not going to read all of these. I have a problem. I'm not going to read all of them, but I wanted all of them. I wanted to. So this weekend, I am going to just sit down and start making progress on it. A couple of these are for school and my finance degree. A lot of them are just books that I wanted to read, but I can get through, I can get through five of them very quickly because they're manga. And then I can get through one that I'm with my granny. These are for my granny. Like, it's doable. But I want to play Sims instead, so. Anyway, thank you so much for coming to this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tell me, do you have the same problem? Tell me, please. At least I didn't pay for these, like the rest of my books. You know what I mean? So if I don't read them, then I'm not at anything because I have to go to the library anyway. So it's not like I'm wasting gas to get books I ain't going to read. I got to go there for work. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I love you all so much. I'll see you guys all in my next video. And don't forget, I'm still a friggin' bulldozer. Au revoir, salut, or au revoir, salut, hey, do, adios, goodbye, and mwah.